Hi, my name is Kyle Gilbert, and I'm the Vice President of Communications at Media Alliance International. Over the next few minutes, I want to give you an overview of the Media Alliance Studio and talk you through some of the decisions we made when setting up our studio. Our goal was to set up a small, versatile office studio with two cameras that would work for live production or post-produced video content without spending a fortune. My background has focused on post-produced video content, so there is a learning curve here, but I've really enjoyed the challenge. We film most videos as though we're filming a live production with intro and outro videos, lower thirds, and camera switching happening live as we record. This has drastically sped up our production time since very little needs to be done after we finish recording. At the heart of our setup is the Blackmagic Design ATEM Mini Pro. This device is a low cost four channel video switcher with a minimalistic hardware design and additional features built into the software that can be accessed wirelessly from our office. Unlike the ATEM Mini, the Pro version gives you the ability to save directly to an SD card and output via HDMI to a multi-view monitor. We also have the option to output directly to a computer as a webcam feed for pushing live video. We're currently using two cameras now, but we're running OBS software into our fourth HDMI camera input for our keys. That leaves us with one HDMI camera input available for when we need it. I'll talk more about our OBS key setup in a few minutes. There are several versions that are more expensive than the ATEM Mini Pro that include additional hardware controllers so you can do things like add keys and ISO all of your videos. But we found that the Pro version is a good fit for our office. For our cameras, we're running two Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 6Ks. We went with the BMP CC6K because we're able to control the camera speed and focus directly from the ATEM Mini Pro's software controls. And that's just using HDMI as a connector. And since we run our audio directly into our camera, we avoid issues with any audio video synchronization. And we can also mix and EQ our audio through the ATEM Mini Pro software controls. Looking at the ATEM Mini Pro's multi-view output, we have the standard program and preview shots and isolated views of each of the four inputs. It also includes three other helpful views. And the first is the live stream information to show if you're live and report on the data rate of your live feed. The second shows the disk information to show if you're recording to disk and let you know how much space you have left on the USB-C connected storage. We're currently using Samsung portable T5 SSDs, and I love that I can swap these over to my MacBook when we're done recording to edit the footage directly from the SSD without having to move the footage. The last view shows audio levels from the camera, so you can make sure that you're getting audio in the recording. One strange thing about the ATEM Mini Pro is that there's no headphone jack on the switcher, but I've gotten around this by monitoring audio directly through the multi-view television monitor. I mentioned that I use Streamlabs OBS Studio for our keys. If you're not familiar with OBS, it's short for Open Broadcasting Software, and it can be used in a variety of ways. Because of its flexibility, it's a preferred studio software for many YouTubers and gamers. Within OBS, you can create scenes and add sources to each scene. It's a robust and free solution for our keying needs. For our setup, I like using it for anything that I need to key in over video, including lower thirds, outro videos, fades to black, or any photo slideshows. A company called Elgato builds out a hardware interface and we use their inexpensive Stream Deck unit to control OBS scenes. My favorite thing about this device is that you can use a built-in library of icons for your buttons and actions, or you can easily design and add your own custom interface and actions for the Stream Deck. So instead of hunting for lower thirds each time we film a video, I can just press this button 
to fire the green screen key with the lower third, or another button to fire the intro video, or whatever else needs to be keyed into the video. For our teleprompter, we're using a standard setup, except instead of using an iPad, we're using a 10-inch monitor that allows us to roll scripts on the screen like I'm doing now, or instead, we can send other content to the monitor, such as a Zoom camera feed to the teleprompter. So as a person is presenting, they can be looking directly into a higher-end camera. And instead of a laptop webcam, this is especially useful for doing video or interviews for presentations. This idea came from DSLR Video Shooter, and you can check out his video for additional details. For a key light, we're using aperture lighting with a light dome too. And then for additional lights, we're using inexpensive LED panels attached to our ceiling grid with small clamps. Best of all, our lighting is set to trigger on and off through an Alexa dot that's connected to an Amazon-enabled power strip. Hey Alexa, turn off the lights. Sure, we could turn on all these lights manually, but it's a nice time-saving feature, and it makes me feel like I'm living in the future. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, just drop a note in the comments here, and I'll be happy to respond.